I had so many dreams of where I wanted to go, who I wanted to be, and what I wanted to do. Theater companies I wanted to start with classmates, movies I wanted to be in, directors I wanted to work with, stories I needed to tell. It might take a little time, I thought, but it would happen. What I didn't have was cash, a bank account, a credit card, or an apartment. I just had debt. A big, hungry, growing larger every moment debt. I packed the life that I knew with socks and a toothbrush into my backpack and I slept on couch after couch after couch after couch at friends' apartments in New York until I wore out their rent-paying roommate's welcome. I didn't want a day job. I was an actor. I was a writer. I was a Bennington graduate. I had to get a day job. I dusted pianos at a piano store on Ludlow Street for five months. I worked on the property of a Shakespeare scholar for a year, pulling weeds and removing bees' nests. Eventually, I was able to pay rent for a spot on the floor of an apartment on the Lower East Side. And then, finally, after two years of job and couch surfing, I got a job in application processing as a data enterer at a place called Professional Examination Services. And I stayed for six years. From the age of 23 to 29, I smoked in the loading docks with the guys from the mailroom and we shared how hungover we all were. I called in sick almost every Friday because I was out late the night before. I hated that job and I clung to that job. My dream of running a theater company with my friend and fellow Bennington graduate Ian Bell had died. No, don't pity me. There's a happy ending. When I was 29, I told myself the next acting job I get, no matter what it pays, I will from now on, for better or worse, be a working actor. So I quit my position at the professional examination services and now I didn't have either the internet or a cell phone or a job. But something good happened. I got a low paying theater job in a play called Imperfect Love, which led to a film called 13 Moons, which led to other roles, which led to other roles. And I've worked as an actor ever since. I didn't know that would happen. At 29, walking away from data processing. I was terrified. 10 years in a place without heat, six years at a job I felt stuck in. Maybe I was afraid of change. Are you? My parents didn't have much money, but they struggled to send me to the best schools. And one of the most important things they did for me is that once I graduated, I was on my own. Financially, it was my turn. And so at 29, in a very long last, I was in the company of the actors and writers and directors I'd sought out that first year, that first day after school. I am by their sides. Father, I wish to confess. Raise the rest of your life to meet you. Don't search for defining moments because they will never come. The moments that define you have already happened and they will already happen again. Don't wait until they tell you you are ready. Get in there. You just get a bit derailed. But soon something starts to happen. Trust me. A rhythm sets in. Just try not to wait until, like me, you're 29 before you find it. 
And if you are, that's fine too. Some of us never find it. But you will. I promise you. The world might say you are not allowed to yet. I waited a long time out in the world before I gave myself permission to fail. I can't go on. I'll go on. You have your own story to tell. But I have to say, please don't ever stop. Please don't even bother asking. Don't bother telling the world you are ready. Show it. Do it. What did Beckett say? Ever tried, ever failed. No matter. Try again. Fail again. Fail better. Thank you so much for having me here.